Okay, on the bench we have an HP laptop um, that's a few years old, um, around 2017-ish. Um, it looks like a Staples Bot laptop because it's covered in fucking stickers and it looks like a pretty much cheapo laptop, if you know what I mean. And the complaint on this was it is very, very fucking slow. Now, the number one thing that I see that causes this with these type of laptops that you buy at the store and stuff is they have a hard drive in them. And if you're running Windows 10, Windows 10 and a standard hard drive, you know, spinning rust, it's going to be an awful experience. Even if the hard drive um, is fully, you know, defragged and everything else, you know, it's a brand new computer, not a whole lot of junk on there. It's still going to be slow. Um, so what I've already done on this computer is I already cleaned it up, you know, got rid of all the bloatware that was on it because this thing had a bunch of HP bloatware, a bunch of garbage and, you know, McAfee and all the all the standard um, bullshit on it. I got rid of all that stuff, um, cleaned up any, you know, I did a disk cleanup on it, you know. It's good to do a disk cleanup before you upgrade to an SSD or migrate because um, you want to get rid of a lot of the crap that's on there. Otherwise, you're just transferring all that crap, and it just takes up extra time. So I did a disk cleanup as well. That got rid of about 12 gig of space. Um, I did a lot of... Uh, I, I ran a, a Malwarebytes scan on it. There's no malware on it. And actually, if you look at the smart report um, on the hard drive, the thing only has been on um, 18 days. So the computer got fairly little use. Now, that could also be because the computer would, you know routinely go into sleep so the computer wouldn't actually be running most of the time when the user used it but 18 hours power on time um or 18 days i mean is not very much okay so what we're going to do is right now this has a hard drive in it um a typical 5400 um western digital blue hard drive i've already defragged it and doing all the cleanup and stuff that did speed up a little bit but it's still very, very slow. I mean, you really want to put an SSD in if you're running Windows 10. I mean, running Windows 10 on a hard drive, you, you just don't want to do that. So I was able to convince him, the client, to um, let us upgrade to an SSD. Um, but first, before we do that, I'm going to get rid of these 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 stickers as well. Because these stickers are, are awful. I mean, you bought a computer, you don't want advertising all over your computer. But we'll run um we'll run a crist crystal disk info. But we're running a, a WDC WD ten J PVX dash sixty JC three T zero one terabyte Western Digital Blue. It's running um, at fifty four hundred RPM, which is pretty damn slow. And it has twenty day power on time. I've added two days onto the power power on time. Um, but it says the hard drive is in good health and temperatures are right, but it's slow. So if we do a, uh, a crystal, crystal disk mark on this hard drive, it's going to be, let's hear, you can probably hear the hard drive. We're probably going to get in the neighborhood of about 50 to 80 megabytes. Uh, it's not just throughput that's the problem. Yeah, it's 56. The, uh, it's also just the access time on stuff. It's just awful. Fifty seven megabytes a second. Ugh. Do I dare know the right speed? I don't think I want to know. And this takes a little while to run. I'll of course speed it up.
I don't know how well you could you could have heard the hard drive there. It definitely has a hard drive in it. <laughs> That's another thing is also uh, not only will go into an SSD make the pure way faster, I'll make it um, more reliable because laptops are generally portable devices. You take them around, you know, they can get a bit of drops and shocks to them. And, you know, having a hard drive in there, <laughs> hard drives can't take that, you know, dropping or, you know, that shock because that can end up damaging them. Um, but also having an SSD will make your system quieter because you're not going to be here in that, um, the head seeking around like crazy trying to find the files and shit. It's going to be all flash memory. So our rights, you know, we're getting, I'm all stop it here. We, we get that, we get the gist. Um, it's performing meh, but this computer, it was so slow. It would take about 45 minutes to boot. And which that's pretty normal. Windows 10 and a hard drive, that's pretty normal. And you you click on the start menu. It'd take it'd take about it take about three minutes for the start menu to pop up. I mean, stuff was just it. You could just hear the hard drive just clashing. You go into Task Manager, the hard drive, um, the disk I/O would be 100%. It'd be fully pegged the entire time. So I'm like, this is what's slowing down your computer the most right here. Is it's it's your disk I/O. You really need to. Uh, swap this out for an SSD. So we're going to do that. That will require taking this computer completely apart, completely apart because there isn't a little, you know, uh, access panel. You have to take the entire bottom off. But um, since we're going to take the entire bottom off, we'll also dust it out and replace the thermal compound on the heat sink. So um, what we're going to do is we are going to um, clone the SSD and what I'm going to do is I have a flash drive right here that has um, a Cronus True Image 2021 on it. So I'm going to pop that into into the USB port here. So I have a flash drive right here that has a Cronus True Image 2021. I'm going to just pop that into a, into a uh, USB port. I'll try not to use my only USB 3.0 port. I'll try to use a 2.0 one. And I'm sorry if the, the lighting and glare looks bad. That's because the screen is, you know, pretty bright. So it's messing up the ISO on the camera. And then next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our SSD. So the SSD we went with on this computer is a Samsung 870 Evo, 500 gig. Now let me explain why I went with this uh, SSD. For SSDs, I always recommend Samsung being your first um, for reliability. And um, it's just, <laughs> it's pretty much the most reputable brand when it comes to SSDs. I only put quality products on my clients' computers. Because um, if a computer comes back to me and the customer lost all their data because of a, a dodgy uh, SSD, um, it's not going to look good on me. So um, I usually, um, for uh, client laptops like this that, you know, it's an older person, they don't really use the computer much, they might just get on, check their email, stuff like that. Um, I'll generally put an 860 Evo in it, but 860 Evos are, um, pretty hard to get now and the prices on them have skyrocketed. Like a one terabyte 860 Evo is like $360. I mean, at that price, I'd rather be putting an 860 Pro in it. Now, 860 Pros is, is, is the, the most reliable SATA SSD money can buy. It's pretty much, pretty much the the, the flagship <laughs> of SATA SSDs. I only put that in um, custom builds I do in critical critical builds, business clients and stuff like that, where the computer is going to get a lot of use and it needs the ultimate reliability. I can't have that SSD failing. Um, but on general laptops like this, I don't, don't see a lot of use. I mean, look at the power on hours of the hard drive. It's only like 18 days or whatever. It's not going to, it doesn't, it's have it hasn't had a whole lot of use in the four years that she's had it. So an 860 Evo is more than sufficient, right? Um, but I couldn't get an 860 Evo because the price. So I had to go with an 870 Evo, which actually has the same uh, flash and everything, um, similar endurance. So that's not an issue. Um, and I went with 500 gig because the one terabyte is still pretty pricey for her budget. Um it's it's like a hundred and some dollars, but um, the the five hundred gig was about 
about $75 to $80, which was more reasonable. Um, she currently has a one terabyte hard drive in there. So yes, we are downgrading space, but um, the space that's being used on the hard drive right now is is pretty much slim to none. There's hardly anything on this. Um, I'd probably say about maybe 50 gig of usage. <laughs> so putting a 500 gig hard um, SSD in there is not gonna be an issue at all. Um, but yeah, generally, I, I generally would put the same amount, same size SSD in. Um, but right now, the market and prices are just so bad. Um, that's kind of became um, uneconomical, if that makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll unbox this SSD, and we're going to use a uh, just a USB to SATA adapter. And I already have an SSD attached, but I'll detach this because we're, we're not going to use this SSD here. And I'll, pl I'll hook it up, and um, we're going to restart the computer into the Acronis USB flash drive. So I don't know how well you guys can see this, but we have a um, Samsung 870 Evo 500 gig. I believe this uses TLC flash, where the um, 860 Pro uses MLC, which is a bit more reliable. But um, I digress. This is still going to be a, a fairly good and reliable drive for this use case here. More, more than sufficient. I don't need to put an 860 Pro in this. Um, plus cost constraints when it make that economical. So I'm just going to use a SATA um, to USB cable here. This is a StarTech one. Um, it, uh, it uses USB 3.1, um, which will give us a 10 gig transfer. But obviously with a SATA drive, it maxes out 6 gigs. So this is pretty much the best cable you can buy for this application. So I go ahead and hook that up, plug that in, and we'll restart the computer into a Cronus. Okay, so I have the uh, SSD hooked up and I have the Acronis uh, flash drive. So uh, what we're going to do, and this doesn't need to be connected to the internet, so I'm going to disconnect this from internet for now. So what we are going to do is um, you could just restart the computer and then find what button ac can access your boot menu settings so you can boot from different mediums. But... Um, a good way to um, do this is once you're already in uh, Windows 10, you press the start button and then um, you hold down the shift button and then hit restart. Okay, you hold down shift and then restart. And then the computer will restart and it will put you in this specialized menu to where you could choose to boot from the uh, USB flash drive. So I don't know how well you guys can see that. Um, I know there's a bit of a glare in this room, but you'll see it'll boot into this specialized menu and you can click use a device. So we're gonna click on that. And then we're gonna do EFI USB device. That means UEFI flash drive, which that is what the Cronus image is. We'll click on that, and then the computer is going to restart and boot into the Acronis flash drive. Okay, so it failed to boot into that. That's kind of interesting. We'll just hit OK. And now it threw us into the boot man, the regular boot manager. And I'm going to do USB hard drive UEFI. We're going to try this again. Oh, and we're oh, it's going to ask us what we want to do. We want to press one for Acronis true image, and it says please wait. That's important. When this boots, you want to pay attention, okay? So it's going to say select an item. You're going to press number one. Now we're loading a Cronus True Image, and I know I'm sorry there's a glare. And as you guys can see, we are now booted into a Cronus True Image. I'm going to readdress the camera, and we'll continue here. So once we're booted up, you'll see that we're in this um, specialized 
a Cronus True Image menu. We are going to go, I usually give this a minute or two just so it can fully see the USB drive, you know, so it can initialize. But we'll go down to Tools and Utilities. Okay, so once you click on Tools and Utilities, you're going to click on Clone Disk. And I usually recommend keeping this on automatic, so we'll just hit next. And now you have to choose your source hard drive. This is the hard drive that's currently in the laptop. So we'll see right here, 931 gig, about a terabyte. WDC, that's the Western Digital hard drive that's in the computer. You'll see the interface, it'll say serial ATA, that means SATA. That means the hard drive that's in the computer. So we wanna click on disk two and we're gonna click next. Okay, so now we have to choose the destination disk that we're gonna make the clone to. This is gonna be your brand new SSD. So you have to know the capacity and the model of it. And usually it's gonna show up via USB or it could show up via SCSI. So we'll see right here, disk number one not initialized. That That's because this, this SSD has not been formatted. That's what you wanna see. You ought to see the one that says not initialized. So we have a 500 gig, 870 Evo. So we're gonna click on that one, and then we're gonna click next. Okay, so now it's just gonna show you the before and after, how it's gonna make the partitions. It's gonna take care of all this. Um, the destination SSD, you know, the, re the replacement hard drive, it can be a smaller size as long as the amount of data that's on the current hard drive is below that. Makes sense? It's it's you just gotta be logical with it. And since we're only using roughly about 50 gig or so of space on the one terabyte hard drive, cloning that over to a 500 gig SSD is not gonna be an issue at all. So we're just gonna click proceed. And now it's gonna go ahead and take care of starting to clone the hard drive. So it's gonna clone the hard drive over to our SSD that we have attached. This is very critical. You do not touch the SSD at all that's in the adapter. You make sure this is, if it's a laptop, make sure it's plugged in to power. That's very critical. And ideally have it connect to a UPS. This is connected to a UPS. You know, it's very cold outside. It's been snowing, a blizzard outside. Somebody hit, somebody hit a uh, electric pole the other day and knocked out the power. It's very critical when you're a technician, you have your you have client stuff on a UPS. So if that power flips, you're not losing our data. This is a pretty safe process because it's just copying the data over. It's not like cutting it or moving it or anything. But um, still, if you know how hard drives work, if they're actively reading something and they lose power, that file can end up getting corrupted. Okay. Now, before I, d I did this, some important things you want to do. First, you want to clean up and update the computer, obviously, right? Clean off any junk, you know, remove, remove programs that doesn't need to be on there. Do the typical technician maintenance on the computer. So I ran in-ban, made sure there's no malware on there. I cleaned up the computer. I removed a bunch of bloatware, uninstalled a bunch of programs that weren't needed on the computer. I did a disk cleanup. This is important. Use Windows built-in disk cleanup and also have it search for system files as well. This will remove a bunch of data, usually on average about 10 to 15 gig of, of just garbage, temporary files, um, old Windows updates, um, et cetera, restore points that aren't needed anymore, um, a bunch of log files. Disk cleanup is a good utility. I think it's better. It's better than CCleaner. CCleaner is bloatware now. Don't use CCleaner anymore. That was That's so 2013. Use Windows built-in disk cleanup. So I did that. You want to do that before you, you clone a disk. You just want to clean up a bunch of garbage. Otherwise, this process is going to be a lot slower because you have so much data on there, so much garbage, right? And then, this is another important thing you want to do. Do a full file system check. To do this, you'll right-click on the hard drive in File Explorer, and then I believe it's under... Uh, I can't remember what tab it's under, but um, it's the same tab that has defrag. You'll go in there in that tab, and you'll you'll select scan scan the system files. And what this will do is it's going to prompt the computer to reboot, and it's going to do a full NTFS file scan on the entire hard drive and fix any corrupted files or any 
you know, anything that's messed up with the file system. You want to do a full file scan before you clone the hard drive over to SSD. That's going to fix a lot of things and make the process better and healthier. And you'll make sure that you will have all files intact. Okay? Very important. People forget to do all this stuff. But there's so much stuff you got to do before you just clone, clone the hard drive over. Another thing, if it's a hard drive and it's really old and it's really slow, it doesn't hurt to also defrag it as well. You can use Microsoft's built-in defrag, but I generally use Defragler. So I, I did defrag the hard drive, and that will somewhat speed up the cloning process. And I'm doing this in real time as I talk. You see it's copying over, and it's not taking too long, because like I said, there's not a whole lot of data on the hard drive, and plus I did all that preventive maintenance, right? I defragged the hard drive, I cleaned up the disk, I did a full file system scan, you name it. I did all that stuff um, to help improve the process. And of course, when, you have, when we have the SSD, it'll just be a healthier, cleaner experience. So it's going to copy. And I forgot, I am going to remove those stickers off of this laptop, and I'll show you guys how to do that. But um, you have to know what you're doing. You take them stickers off. Um, you just you don't just peel them off. They're going to leave residue. Last thing you want is where people are going to be laying, resting their arms and stuff. You don't want to have um, residue, sticky residue, all over your forearms. You don't want that. So you got to know what you're doing to remove those stickers. But I know what I'm doing because I used to work at a technology company where we I'd process hundreds of laptops a day and I'd take off asset tags and stickers all the time. So I know how to do it. We will remove those advertisements off our laptop because that's garbage. And on the actual uh, uh, SSD or the the SATA the, SS, the SATA USB cable, I can't speak today. <laughs> there is an indicator light um, that blinks, so it's blinking, meaning that it is transferring transferring data, which is excellent. But like I said, you don't want to touch don't want to touch anything. This right here is just leave it alone. Make sure you know it's plugged in and everything. Um, don't want to lose power. If it's a desktop, make sure it's hooked up to a UPS when you're doing this. Especially if you're doing bigger drives, you know. Does this thing drives like an eight terabyte drive? You have a lot of data that's being copied. It, you, you just want to err on the side of caution, right? Now, a Cronus True Image, you can get it on Amazon. You just search a Cronus True Image 2021. And you're going to get the product key um, directly from Amazon. Make sure it says, says sold and shipped by Amazon. Generally, they'll ship you a retail box. It might have a CD in it. It might not. But what they're going to ship you is they're going to ship you a uh, product key. Then you'll go to Acronis' actual website, acronis.com, and then create an account and then enter in that product key. And then you'll be able to download the ISO, which sometimes they call it like a rescue disk or whatever. But... This rescue ISO that we're creating is what is able to boot this Acronis True Image on the computer and do various um, disk utilities such as cloning, backing up, etc. I think they also have a, uh, a wiping tool as well. So you can do like a DoD3 pass on hard drives, etc. You don't want to do those type of utilities on an SSD. Generally, you want to stick with the SSD vendor's um, shredding tool because um, they will know how to securely erase their SSDs, but the only true way to um, shred data on an SSD is to take it out of its enclosure and then run the actual PCB that has the flash chips on it, you know, the NAND flash, down like a uh, shredder. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> I may have worked for a data eradication company. Wink, wink. But it's pretty. T this is pretty common knowledge, you know. I'm not really giving away any secrets here you know but generally to um erase an ssd like you know uh you can't really do the same techniques you can against a hard drive uh you usually you want to stick with the ssd vendors uh shredding utility or physical destruction and i did hook up the uh the the 
destination SSD that's you know using the USB adapter. I did plug that into a USB 3.0 port. Um, you do want to do that because uh, it will transfer faster. Um, you want to plug like the mouse and the Cronus flash drive into USB 2.0 ports. And then plug the SSD into a USB 3.0 port. Okay. If it's a newer computer, it will have 3.1, you know, 3.2, whatever. You know how USB is, all the new naming conventions. But you know what I mean. You want the, you want the data to transfer faster. You're not going to plug the SSD into a USB 2.0 port. It's just going to be too slow. Especially if you're transferring a lot of data. Like I said, we're only transferring probably roughly 50 gig. But still, you want to make the process as fast as you can. And you see, that this is real time so far. I may have cut a couple areas out where I wasn't talking, but during most of this process, I've been talking. So this is taken what? I'd say about 10 minutes. Of course, time's going to vary for you um, based on, you know, the amount of data you're moving. And of course, if the source drive's in the hard drive and heavily fragmented one, it's going to be slower. But I did some preventive maintenance to speed it up a little bit. So it's transferring roughly around, you know, 50 megabytes to 80 megabytes a second. And the time left on a Cronus is pretty much never accurate, so don't go by it. Okay, there we go. So that completed in what, 10? 15 minutes <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna hit OK on this and click on back on home and um, now I'll look at the SSD enclosure uh, make sure it's not blinking it's not blinking so it's not transferring any data it's just sitting idle I'm gonna check the hard drive activity light on the computer and that is still um, lighting up pegged so it is currently doing something so we'll wait on that although it doesn't really matter too much if we just yank power because the hard drive is going to be replaced so we, who cares if something gets corrupted on the hard drive but I'll wait I'll just uh, wait until that stops blinking it's doing something mm -hmm. who knows what it's doing but the SSD enclosure is uh, definitely not transferring any data right now so what I can do is uh, I can do a full power off okay so we'll power off the machine and then we will proceed to the next part okay so the cloning process is done I'm gonna check the uh, SSD enclosure it's not blinking I'm gonna check the hard drive hard drive is still doing something it's still showing activity not sure why because you know it's not cloning or doing anything right now and Cronus is off the flash drive, so who knows? I guess it lost its shit. Maybe it's mad that it's getting replaced. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, uh, yep, SSD enclosure is not blinking. Nothing's being transferred to that. I'm going to hold down the power button until the computer turns completely off. Like that. And you'll know it'll go boop. And then now I'm going to uh, wait a couple seconds. I'm going to disconnect the Acronis flash drive. We don't need this anymore. So that process is done. And then now I'm going to disconnect the uh, SSD enclosure. Disconnect my USB mouse. I'm going to plug the client's uh, USB dongle back in. These are very easy to lose, these little um, uh, mouse dongles. So you want to make sure you get them plugged back in. Okay, so now we can, uh, I'm going to disconnect the AC power adapter. Now we're going to, we can proceed on. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to get rid of these stickers first. So I'm going to set this SSD aside and we're going to proceed. Okay, so if you couldn't tell earlier, this computer has stupid advertising stickers right on it. Ugly fucking ugly when I buy a computer when I buy a laptop I don't want advertisements stuck right on it okay 
This is what happens when you buy laptops from stores, okay? This looks like something that would be a display model. And you may think, oh, this is a one-off. You know how many client computers I've seen with these stupid stickers all over them? Lots. And they usually go to Staples or Best Buy or Walmart, and they end up with this garbage. So we're going to get rid of these stupid stickers, okay? Let me show you the other one. Look at that. HP Notebook, empower to do more. Reliable Intel power and storage. Ah! This doesn't have an SSD in it. It has a Western Digital um, hard drive. <laughs> Chris, H HD backlight screen, up to one terabyte storage. Ooh. I don't want these stickers on my fucking laptop. So we're gonna get, we're gonna get rid of them, and um, you can't just peel these off, especially in cold weather, because what's gonna happen? They're gonna leave residue, and you know what? That's a bad thing, because you you rest your forearm on the computer, right? You rest your forearm to type, right? So uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't want residue there, especially sticky residue. Yeah. Look at this joke of a computer. Look at that. It's garbage. So um, to get rid of these, what you have to do, and this right here, I take no responsibility if you damage your computer, if you burn your house down or something explodes or whatever, because this is a very dangerous process. You have to have a heat gun, put it on low, and you have to aim the airflow away from the computer, away from, away from the keyboard, because if you are blowing that heat gun in this direction, the keys on the keyboard will start melting, and the, these keys will actually float away, like like liquid. Uh, it's 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 very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. But you have to get a heat gun, and aim. You also got to keep track of the the buttons for the the touchpad as well. But you're gonna aim it going out this way. Of course, you got you want to make sure there's this thing's turned off, not plugged in, and the battery is fully taken out as well. Okay but you want to aim the flow away and you want to have the heat gun on low because you have to warm up this adhesive. Once this adhesive is warmed up, it's more pryable. It's, 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 it comes off like butter, okay? But if this adhesive is just you know room temp or it's cold, it's going to be a bitch to get off without leaving residue. And I've done this professionally for a technology company. And I've, I've, I've probably done hundreds of laptops a day where I had to remove you know asset tags and stickers and stuff like that off of laptops, various models. Usually a bunch of Lenovo ThinkPads, but Dells, HPs, you name it. Um, I've had to do it, so I know how to do it. But you want to aim. For this one, I'll probably aim going out this way because I don't. I want to stay away from this trackpad. You only want the heat to be on the sticker surface. You, you want to keep as much of that airflow, that, that hot air, off of the computer as possible, right? Because you can risk damaging and melting some. The next thing you're going to need, you're going to need some type of plastic scraper, like a plastic spatula or a plastic scraper. I have one right here, and this is a really good plastic sticker scraper, okay? And this, once this adhesive is warmed up, I'll be able to take it at these edges, and I'll be able to fully remove these stickers, okay? So let's do that. First thing we got to do is we got to remove the battery. You want to set this battery far away. Another thing is when you're operating this heat gun, you want to make sure there's no aerosol cans near you. You don't have any flammable like isopropyl alcohol because I use that when I'm you know doing thermal compound. You want to make sure there's no nothing that's going to uh, ignite. Got to be very careful. Like I said, I take no responsibility. Proceed at your own risk. And I usually bend this this screen back. Uh, quite far so I can have more leverage and I'm going to even have to move my camera far back away from this because I don't want the heat hitting my camera either. So I have a uh, heat gun right here. I don't know how well you guys can see it on camera. I'll put it on low. I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to do this. Let's see if I can get rid of these stickers. So the battery's removed. It's been disconnected from power. We're ready. Another thing I'm going to note is uh, 
you don't want to, you don't want to, when you're using the heat gun, let me turn it off. Um, you don't want to aim it straight down. You want to aim it like where it's blowing the airflow um, across the sticker, going outward. Does that make sense? You don't want to aim down because what that's doing is that's building up heat and you're going to end up with a, you're going to end up melting the plastic and leaving like a bubble or whatever. You want to aim the airflow going across the sticker, going outward. Do not aim down. And you also want to move the heat gun. I don't know how we can see this on camera. I don't know the angle. In a circular motion to where you're not just keeping it, you know, stationary. It's not saying static. You're keeping it dynamic, okay? You don't want to just nail in at one particular area. You want to circle around, okay? So I don't know how we can see on camera how I'm doing it. But like I said, I take no risk. I've done this professionally for several years on hundreds and hundreds of laptops, different models. So I kind of know how to do it. But um, if you've never done it before, you don't know how to do it, don't do it. Bring it to me. I'll do it. Beautiful. So I was able to fully get one off. No residue at all. No residue at all. This whole this whole thing feels warm. It's just a mild warm. It made this residue viable. On the sticker, that came off like butter. Okay, so I'm going to have to heat this other one up because obviously it's cooling down. But you you want you got to be fast with it. After you put put it on there for you know a good 10, 15 seconds, uh, you want to get you want to have your scraper right nearby to um, ply this off. That came off like butter, like sex. Stickers have been successfully removed. This one, you could feel it. Pretty much no residue at all. The corners might have a little bit of stuff. You just take a Q-tip with iso alcohol. You might want to warm this up a little bit, make that adhesive a little bit more pliable. Um, but when you deal with iso alcohol, have this fully turned off and unplugged. Do the iso alcohol after you've warmed up the surface, okay? Uh, don't even have the iso alcohol near you, okay? So, <laughs> um, this sticker, I could have warmed up a little bit longer because there's just a tad of remnants at the bottom here, but I can probably rub that off. But there's no sticky shit at all. Like, this is just, this is just residue here. This just comes off. But as far as, like, the sticky adhesive stuff, there's none at all in these palm rests. 
The customer is going to be happy. This looks way better. See, this is why you take it to Victor Koss. He's a professional at this shit. But I'll clean, I'll clean up these surfaces. I'll get this off, and this computer will look like brand fucking new. Yeah, you need stickers removed from your laptop? Bring them to me. <laughs> but it'd be better if you don't buy laptops at your at stores, okay? Okay, so the residue is, uh, well, the stickers have been removed. Um, the computer looks way better, but there's still a little bit of sticker shit. So, uh, but it's, it's not the sticky adhesive. It's just uh, more like dirt. So I'm going to show you how to get that off. Uh, the heat gun is fully unplugged and out of view. So we have the isopropyl alcohol. This stuff is very flammable, so be very careful with this. Always put the uh, lid back on when you're done. Also, it'll fully evaporate if you don't put the lid back on it. There we go, like new. If you feel it now, not even a hint that a sticker was ever there. Like this feels like stickers never existed. The surface, flawless. No scratches, no scuffs, nothing. This looks pristine. You know why? Because a professional did it. Now another thing, I'm just gonna make sure that none of the keys got melted. The best way to know is they won't click anymore. You know, it'll be stuck. Usually the, the, the bottom two rows. I also check the trackpad. Flawless. You know why? Because a professional did it. Okay. Now we can start getting on with um, swapping out the hard drive for the SSD. This will involve taking off the bottom cover. So let's begin. Now, before I start, I'm going to lay down some paper towels so the client's computer isn't just scuffing against this uh, tabletop like that. Okay. So now I'm going to probably readjust the camera angle, and um, we're going to get on with this. Okay. Now, this process right here, a lot of people, they would just uh, go off the flow and try to take it apart on their own or they look up some YouTube video or something like that. But each laptop is unique. They're proprietary, so they all come apart somewhat differently. Now you can see this one does not have an access panel, okay? Um, to the hard drive or RAM. You have to take off this entire bottom. 
And this entire bottom's beh, not the easiest to come off, which is lovely, right? Gotta love how they build computers nowadays, right? So uh, the best way to know how the computer comes apart is to go, this is an HP laptop, so to go hp.com forward slash support. And then what you want to do is you want to type in the serial number of this computer, which is located on the back where it says serial number. And I'll tell you the exact model. You go under manuals and you're going to get the service manual. Every laptop out there, most of the manufacturers, they're going to give you a service manual that tells you how to access the hard drive, access the RAM, change the heat sink, stuff like that, right? That's how a professional does it, okay? There's nothing wrong with RTFM. Read the fucking manual, right? And the reason why... I went and got the service manual for this laptop is because I've never taken one of these specific laptops apart. I've taken apart other laptops, and of course, <laughs> if I was taking that apart every day, I would I would know it by heart. But each laptop is different, and if you unscrew something or you pull on something that you're not supposed to, you will end up causing uh, damage. And since this this is a customer's laptop, I'm held liable for that, and plus that that reflects back on me. Okay. And the worst thing you want is you want you don't want to have to be responsible for buying the customer a new laptop. Not only that, your reputation goes through the trash. Okay, no, they're not they're gonna say, oh that that Victor Koss, he don't know what the fuck he's doing. He damaged my laptop. So we're gonna take this apart properly. We're gonna swap out the hard drive. Okay, so I try to get you guys a different angle there. Hopefully a good angle. I know there's a glare from the window over there. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the the dongle. Because obviously the cover's not going to come off if you have a uh, mouse dongle. I'm going to go get a little uh, sandwich baggie and put this in. So I do not forget to give this back to the customer. Okay, so I'm going to refer to the service manual here. I know, something you don't see very many technicians do because their ego's in the way, right? So to access the hard drive... So on page 60 of the service manual for this laptop, and I don't know the, the model off the top of my head. It will be, of course, in the title, right? HP is really good at hiding the models on these laptops. So if you have an HP laptop, you don't don't know what the model is. To get the model, what you do is you go to hp.com forward slash support, and then you're going to type in the serial number of your laptop. The serial number will be on the bottom. Right here, it says serial. It's over here on the right-hand corner. You put in the serial number, and it's going to tell you the exact model of your laptop. That's also how you're going to get the service manual for it, okay? That's how you'll know the model of the laptop, okay, for HPs. Best way to do it, okay? So on page 60, it says hard drive, okay? This is for replacing the hard drive. It says obviously shut down the computer, disconnect the battery, stuff like that. So the first thing to do is remove the battery. We've already removed the battery. Removing a battery is pretty self-explanatory. I don't need a service manual for that. You pinch in on both of these uh, clips here, the battery pops out, okay? Make sure it's disconnected from the AC adapter, obviously, right? So the next step after removing the battery is to remove the optical drive, okay? And that's on page 49. And to remove the optical drive, it's going to end up being this screw right here, most likely, yep. It's usually one of these screws right near where the optical drive is that holds it in. So you unscrew a screw, and then you just pull on the optical drive, and it slides out. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that here in a second. Now it says to use a Phillips um, 2.5 by, uh, so it, does, it just says the dimensions of the screw. It's a, it says it's a Phillips screw. Usually on computers I like to use JS, but it's saying Phillips. So we'll use a probably a Phillips 1 or a Phillips 0 on that. So I'm using a Phillips 0. And the optical drive should just slide out. And it does. So there's the optical drive. This is a model DU-8AESH-15B. Manufactured in November 2016. So this laptop's um, late 2016, early 2017 model. And it's a DVD. Just a standard DVD drive. Not Blu-ray. Nothing fancy. So I'll set that aside. 
So the optical drive has been removed. Okay, that's important to do before you take the start prying this cover off. I'm going to have to find a place to put all these screws. So let me find something for that. Okay, optical drive has been removed. I got a little uh, cup to put them in. Uh, some technicians will have a mat where they can organize them out. We're not tearing apart this entire computer. We're just taking the back cover off. Most of the screws should be similar lengths. I'll take note of ones that are smaller. But, um, yeah, if I had a bigger workbench, more space, I would have a mat where you can lay them out and put each one back in the exact location it was going. But that's not a huge deal. We're keeping them all contained right there in a little Coca Cola glass. So after you remove the optical drive, which we've done, so it says position the computer upside down with the front towards you. Okay, I think I had, yep. Remove the two rubber bumpers from the rear of the bottom of the computer. So it's talking about these little rubber feet. There's going to be screws under here, or maybe a screw. Okay. Um, the problem with removing these rubber feet is the adhesive that never goes back on very well. So you only want to remove part of it to where you just see the screw to get the screw out. Okay, so we'll do that. So it shows me right here the diagram of all the screws that come off and how the lid comes off. So really, there's 11 screws that have to come out and, uh, the lid just, the bottom just comes off, basically. Okay, so there's some under these rubber feet. Let me see if I can see it. Uh, maybe on the other side of it. So I might need to get a flathead and get these off. But we'll go ahead and do that. right there okay so yep it's right at the end of these rubber feet there's a small Phillips screw so I'll go ahead and take care of that Also helps to have a magnetized screw driver. Uh, I'll ma remagnetize this bit because I'm going to be using it a lot. That's a lot better. That's a lot better. Good to have those uh, screw magnetizers or screwdriver magnetizers. So I'll get the other rubber bumper off and we'll proceed. So far, all these screws are starting seem, seeming to be the same exact size, which is good. So I'm going to look at the diagram, see what screws it's telling me to take off here. 
So it looks like there's three along the top edge, one in the center, two right here, one on the corner there. Okay. So it's 11 screws total. Okay. Now I don't know if that's including the one I just did. So we got three, three screws so far. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Ten. Eleven. That was eleven screws. I don't see any more. Some, and it says start prying and it should come off. Now this is where you might need a spludger and I got spludgers coming so I might have to pause the video until we get this but um, this, they're becoming the day. All the screws have been out and this should just lift right off. I'll look over again make sure. It's important when, before you start taking this off there's nothing plugged into any of the any of the IO ports. You know, No little mouse dongle no SD card in the card slot. You know, optical drive out. Of course, before you move the optical drive, make sure there's not a disc in it. Um, you know, just do the proper stuff. Make sure there's no I.O. in it. So she's ready to be pried on. Of course, I'll make sure. Usually by the battery compartment or on the corners, they'll have hidden screws. But I counted. That was 11. Okay. And they, I, they were including the optical drive screw on that as well. Okay. So now all we got to do is, uh, well, it'll lift right off. No. You're going to have to, we're going to have to get a spludger. Okay. We'll pause it for here. Okay. So I got some spludgers in. This is what they look like. Just some prying tools that's going to help uh, take this back cover off. We already removed all the screws, all 11 screws, and I have them in a container. And um, it literally says right in the manual, start prying at the front of the computer and work around to the back to separate the bottom cover from the computer. Remove the bottom cover. So it's literally shown in the manual that it just, uh, once you have all the screws out, it just uh, pries open and lifts up. So that most likely indicates that it's, there's probably some plastic clips along the corners of the edges and you have to get a spludger in there and um, unclick them. Um, I hate when they do that. It's like, can't screws be enough? They have to put all these plastic clips and you gotta be careful because if you're not careful, they can end up breaking. So let's go ahead and start trying to see if we can um, start taking the spludger at it and maybe some pick cards and stuff like that and seeing if we can get this cover off.
it is popping up a little bit. Now, the reason why I use a, uh, a plastic spludger like this is if you use like a, a flathead screwdriver or uh, even, you can even probably use a credit card, but if you use a flathead screwdriver, you can end up scratching and um, damaging this unit. So you got to be very careful when you use this. So you really want to have the proper plying tools in a spludger, usually a plastic one. But if you're in a tight fix, you could use like a credit card, but who wants to chew up the ends of their credit card, right? Did I ever mention I really, really hate laptops?
has a screw in it. How did I miss that? Hmm? I still had a screw in the center. How did I miss that? There we go. Okay. Yep, had plastic clips all along the side. I don't know if that's still on camera angle or not. We now have access to the hard drive. We have access to the uh, to the RAM if we want to upgrade the RAM. Access to the heat sink, BIOS battery, speakers. So you gotta be very careful when you're prying on these ends because you end up, you could end up breaking something. Okay. We got her open. Whew. So. There was a screw in the center. Interesting. Very interesting. So I'm going to. We're going to proceed to the next part here in a second. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the service manual and look for what it says about the hard drive. So the hard drive part is on page 60. Move the bottom cover. Disconnect the hard drive cable from the system board. Remove the three Phillips screws that secure the hard drive assembly to the computer. So it's saying it's connected to the system board. Does not show what screws, but it's pretty self-explanatory. These ones right here, these three right here. And then there's the uh, connector for the hard drive there. So I very carefully removed the, the, the connector from there. And now I'm going to very carefully remove the hard drive. hard drive has been extracted. We're going to set this aside and we're going to prepare the caddy. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the SATA uh, connector. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the SSD and we're going to transplant this.
as you can see, you definitely want to have a magnetized screwdriver. These screws are very, very small. Okay, so the hard drive caddy has been installed on the SSD. We're going to reconnect the SATA connector, make sure it falls into the laptop enclosure, and reconnect the cable. I'm just going to put, I pushed in on the ribbon cable just to make sure it's fully seated because I was pulling on it earlier. and it sets right down in there. So we're gonna screw it back on. You also wanna make sure when you're screwing stuff back on, you're not putting too much pressure down because this is effectively sitting on the screen. You can crack the screen. Be very careful the amount of force you apply down. So this screw hole over here is actually a dud, so it's actually with this one, these three right here. So I'm going to go ahead and reconnect this um, so we have that connected. So to get that connected, you're going to lift up on this little latch and then push the, all the way in and then push the lever down. There we go. Of course, before I would put the, the the back panel all the way on, I will, of course, boot the system, make sure the SSD boots. But also, before we do that, we will also um, dust the machine out and put new thermal compound on it. But let's make sure that the SSD boots. I'm just going to lay this on here. I'm not going to like snap it in or anything. I just want to make sure the SSD can boot.
I'm gonna press power on and we're gonna see if it can boot the SSD. And it does, you can see it's doesn't hesitate to boot right up. I'd say that's a success. Now you're not gonna see it very well on camera because the angle is messed up, but it did boot into Windows. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes just to load the drivers and stuff like that. Then I'm gonna have it shut down and then we'll, we will proceed to uh, clean out the unit and then reassemble it. Okay, unit's fully powered down. I made sure the hard drive activity light and power light is fully out. We'll unplug it from AC power again. And then we are going to put it back on its back and we are going to clean out the unit and apply new thermal compound. Since we had the unit completely apart, it's a good idea to do that while you have access to it. So as you can see, here's the unit with the new uh, SSD installed. Fully installed, connected correctly, Nothing was damaged there. Excellent. Speakers look okay. Nothing else seems to be punctured or damaged. If you do note, it looks like we have another SATA connector. Or actually, no, that's not a SATA connector. This might be a... Uh, this is an M.2 drive, M.2 slot right here. So this could um, theoretically have an M.2 drive in it as well. But yeah. You can see right here it has um, one stick of RAM in it. So you could upgrade the RAM. You got your Wi-Fi card right here. It's a uh, it's a Lighton, Lighton branded. It's a Realtek 8723BE. So you got your your Wi-Fi card right there going to the antennas, which will be in the the bezel of the uh, of this of the monitor, the screen. Uh, this doesn't actually look too dusty at all. Like I'm looking at it, and there's no signs of dust. The fan, the fan actually looks, doesn't need, the fan looks like it's pretty much brand new. Like I said, this, it doesn't look like it has too much dust in it. But I'm going to go ahead and take canned air and just blow, blow out that fan. Um, and this, this right here, you can tell this is um, integrated uh, Intel graphics only. It doesn't have a discrete GPU, but you could see the slot for where it would, because you would have two of these heat sink pads on this heat pipe here, if it had uh, discrete graphics like NVIDIA graphics, but it's just uh, integrated graphics. This is pretty much um, bottom of the barrel. <laughs> but to take this off, it's numbered. So you do one, two, three, four, and um, that's pretty self-explanatory how that comes off. So we will apply new thermal compound on this, being a few years old. Um, but as far as dusting it out, it actually looks pretty pristine. Like there's like hardly any dust in this at all. Like I said, it had what, 18 hour power on time. So most of the time the unit was in sleep mode or hibernation. The fan looks fine, but I'll still put some dust, put some um, compressed air through that, uh, through that fan there, through the heat sink blades. But we'll take this heat sink off. So these screws are very tiny Phillips. I'm going to use a P0 on it. I'm not even getting any traction on it. Let me see if it says what screws these are. These might be JIS. So it doesn't say what screws. <laughs> but I'm using a uh, Phillips 0 and it's still not getting a good uh, bite. That's the last thing you want to do is you want to strip the screws on your, your heat sink.
I'm going to try a Phillips one. Still no game. I'm going to try getting my uh, teeny turner. It might be a Phillips zero zero. Still don't got any bite. So this, this might very well be JIS screws. So I'm using a JS0. I don't know if I have a JS00. I don't. I need to get one. But I'm getting a better bite with JS. How you want to do this, you don't want to unscrew the screws all the way. You just want to do a little bit, go to the next number, a little bit, go to the next number. You want to go in the order that they say. And to put it back on, you pretty much go reverse. I have to get my iFixit kit because this might need a JAS uh, zero zero as it's stripping a little bit. I have no idea what bit these screws are, but these are awful. It does not tell you either. It does not tell you what type of screw it is. I'm not getting a good I'm not getting a good bite with JS or Phillips. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words right now. We might not be able to replace thermal compound on this because these screws are really, really bad. Damn. Okay, so uh, due to HP being absolute fucking garbage, I wasn't able to get the heat sink off be because the final screw, I can't get a good bite on it. It appears to be stripped. And the only way you're going to be able to get that off is if you apply a lot of downward pressure, but... Uh, you can't do that because you end up cracking the laptop screen. So, um, yeah, that's not great. So, um, shame on HP for not telling you what driver to use on these screws. I tried Phillips first, then I tried JIS, and um, I ended up using Phillips Zero and um, trying to screw these the other three that I loosened, tried to tighten them back as much as I could. Um, yeah, that's not that's not too great. I'm not too happy about that at all. I'm kind of fucking um, upset about that. But I can't change the thermal compound because um, it's gonna it, the screws are in really bad condition. I can't get a good bite on them. Um, I try to apply some pressure without breaking the screen or anything, right? And um, 
I tried various sizes of drivers. Tried Phillips double O, Phillips single O, uh, JS double O. I tried JS double O from my iFixit kit. Tried a genuine JS bit from Vessel, uh, JS zero, and that seemed to have a great, a decent bit on these three. But that third one, it for some reason it was just stripping like a SOB. You gotta be careful with strip because you're gonna leave metal shavings. So. Try to get the bulk of the metal shavings on the end of the tip and then wipe off the tip somewhere else. You don't want to get metal shavings down on the motherboard because then you could obviously short something out and cause some damage. But um, not too pleased about that. I did try to screw the heat sink back on as good as it could. You know, these other three screws, try to screw those on as good as I could without stripping them and without damaging the screen. So hopefully it's on there pretty decently. I'm going to take the can air and blow out that fan, even though the fan looks okay. And we're going to reassemble it, and we're going to, uh, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on the thermals on the CPU, make sure it seems reasonable. I mean, these thermals on these laptops is pretty garbage anyway, but, but um, yeah, I'm not too pleased about that at all. Very not too pleased. So we'll go ahead and blow that fan out, and then we'll try to start reassembling this and um, getting this over with. All these screws, when we took the bottom cover off, they all seem to be around, all the same, appear to be the same size and dimensions and everything, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I can't believe I forgot that center screw. <laughs> I counted 11, but they meant 
excluding the optical drive, of course. I think they should be a little bit more clear on that because it looked like they include the optical drive screw in the uh, diagram. But um, there's a reason why people call HP horrible products because they pretty much are. We got leftover screws. Where are these? Oh, yeah, under the rubber feet. Derp. Now I got to do under the rubber feet. See? Little damage to those rubber bumper feet as possible. There we go. And no remaining screws. Excellent. Now we just got to see what is the damage. If I knew about that heat sink, the screws were going to be that bad, I wouldn't have even attempted it. Honestly, it probably is okay. It doesn't really need it because, like I said, it had a little use, but still thermal compounds sitting around for, you know, four or five years, not the greatest. But um, HP being awful with their choice of screws on that heat sink, um, pretty bad. Hopefully their uh, thermals look okay though. And as far as uh, the computer looking, make sure everything looks snapped in, there's nothing bulging, there's no scratches or any damage to the screen. I'm gonna give it a good look over and we're gonna make sure everything's doing okay. Um, there are, <laughs> ugh. When I use that spludger, there are a couple marks on the bottom. I'm going to try to buff those out. At least they're on the bottom of the unit, but still, I could have done better with the spludger. Um, had I known that was still in, I probably would have not had as much of a hard time taking this off as I did. So I'm going to try to clean this up, and we'll look it over, make sure everything looks okay.
So I'm going to take a look at the I.O. ports and everything, make sure everything looks accessible and, you know, I don't have to snap the bezel in anymore. I'm going to give it a good look over, make sure everything looks okay. I'm not liking the look on the bottom, but um, I'll try my best to clean it up. I'm going to look over the, the, the corners, make sure there's no scratches on the actual unit here. The actual unit looks okay. The screen, the screen's fine. So I think we're ready to power this bad boy on and see, see if she boots into uh, Windows. And it boots right in the windows. You can hear the fan a little bit, but it's not too loud. I'm going to, of course, uh, run this a little bit, check the thermals, you know, open up HW monitor. And we'll check the SSD out, make sure everything's looking okay. But as far as the unit itself, I'm going to, of course, get out a flashlight and look, look deeper and better. Uh, everything's snapped in. There's nothing bulging or anything like that. All the screws are accounted for. Um, the only real fault would probably be that I shouldn't have tempted that heat sink and I should have, and the bottoms right at these corners got a couple scuffs, but it's on the bottom of the unit, but still, that's unacceptable, I know. So, uh, I'll try to buff that out and clean that up. Um, other than that, I think we have a flaw a flawless uh migration to an SSD. It is a lot more snappier. Like I press the start menu, it's not even thinking about it. So we're I'm going to look over the uh, operating system stuff like that and uh we'll check back in. Okay, so I looked around the laptop, everything's good. Thermals seem to be all right for a laptop. Um, they jump around a lot, but, you know, the laptop's clocking up and down so rapidly whenever it does a task. That's pretty normal. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see uh, how this unit does. See how fast it boots on the new SSD. Let's see if it, it doesn't even get to the loading thing. <laughs> It's a little slower than normal, but let's just see. Watch you make a fool out of me now. <laughs> ah, there was an update, that's why. course whenever you want to do a show off it's going to do something stupid like this right i don't want ugh. okay there we go it doesn't like that it does not use the microsoft account god love windows 10 right it's great 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 okay so we're gonna uh Hey, the start menu was, was responsive. We're going to do a crystal disk mark info on it. Or a crystal disk info. And um, as you guys can see, I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. We are running a Samsung 
SSD, 870 Evo, 500 gig. Power on hours. <laughs> it's not even registering yet. It's been restarted five times. It's an SSD. 10 gig of total writes. Should be a little bit more on that since we did the migration, but. Yep, 27 degrees Celsius. That seems okay. Pretty normal for a laptop. Now let's do a, a crystal disk mark. Much more responsive. Boots right up. We'll, we'll go ahead and um, try this out. This should be connected to a uh, SATA 3 interface. I did install Samsung Magician on the computer as well. So, you know, we're doing that much better. Look at that. 552 megabytes a second. Getting pretty much near, uh, say, the limitations there. Of course, like I said, this isn't going to be the, this isn't the, the best, the the best of the best SSD for SATA. That would be the 860 Pro, but still, definitely a definitely an upgrade over the uh, the hard drive. So here's the uh, old hard drive, a one terabyte. Uh, it's a WD10 JPVX. It's a uh, 5400 RPM WD Blue, and it was manufactured December 13th, 2016. Like I said, this is this this is a late 2016 computer here. And what I do when I when I swap out the uh, hard drive for an SSD, I'll take the client's old hard drive, and I'll do a, a full uh, DoD three pass wipe on it to f shred any um, data on the hard drive. You want to make sure you do that. Well, with the old the customer's old data, you want to make sure that's fully eradicated. You don't just throw it in a dumpster or something like that. So as you see, we're, we're getting excellent results here across the board compared to the uh, hard drive, right? I'm just waiting for it to show the right. Now, you don't want to sit here and just run this all day and night because that's just going to eat up your uh, eat up your rights on your SSD there, you know? We'll wait for it. This is about how long these tests take. They take a while because they're trying multiple files at once and they're just hammering the SSD. Yep, that's pretty normal. I threw out the box, so I couldn't look at what it said the read and writes are supposed to be, but that's looking about pretty acceptable there. That's what I would expect to see. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Pretty, pretty good. Definitely an upgrade. Just when I was uh, opening stuff, it's definitely responsive now. It's a lot more responsive than it was before. I took some um, toothpaste to some of the scuffs on the bottom. Um, it helped a little bit, but not too too great. But it's a minor little thing there. So the writes about 500 megabytes. I said 870 Evo. It's not going to be the fastest drive around, but still miles better than a hard drive, right? I don't know how far we got on the last test when we did the hard drive, but as you can see there. Yep, 417. That's looking about right. So I'll go ahead and stop this now. We, we kind of get the gist. Definitely an upgrade. So uh, I'm going to open up Chrome. Let's see how fast that opens. Opens up right away. Okay. We're going to open up Word. Opens up right away. PowerPoint. Opens up right away. Excel. Opens up right away. Edge. Opens up right away. The one thing that's slowing it down is just the internet connection, you know. File Explorer. Just opens up right away. Start menu is uh, very responsive. If I go to Task Manager, We'll notice now in Task Manager, our disk I.O. is not pegged at 100% all the time. It's at 2%, 1%. We go to Performance. We see this system has an i7-7500U. Like I said, this is a pretty budget laptop, right? You see our clock speed's jolting around there. It's only it's sub 1 gigahertz. That's because it's an idle right now. 
eight gig of RAM. We could have upgraded the RAM, but eight gig is eight gigs basically bare minimum. That's that's the bare minimum I would accept in a computer. So actually for the application that this lady is using this laptop for, it's eight gig is still sufficient. That's fine. But we could have upgraded while we had it open. So we see disk right here, Samsung SSD 870 Evo 500 gig. It does see our SSD and you could see 0%, 1%. It's responsive. It's good. So I'm going to run um, HW info um, or HW monitor, I mean. And I'm going to check some of the temps. I did check them early. I did check them earlier and it, they stayed around. Uh, they stayed around, uh, see, th about 32, 33. That's just idle. And when the CPU was under load, it went up to about 65 degrees Celsius. So even though I, I messed with the heat sink a little bit, um, it's still working. <laughs> the heat sink's still performing. So that's pretty normal for a laptop. Um, these are actually good idle temps. That's that's pretty pretty good, 30 degrees Celsius. That's nothing to be alarmed about. 65 is a little toasty, but it's that's more than acceptable for a laptop. So the other temperatures look okay. I don't see anything that looks alarming. SSD temp's fine. So pretty much I think this computer is uh, ready to go. I'll go into the control panel, uninstall some of the software I installed, like the utilities, do a little bit of cleanup. So here's a look at the old hard drive. Like I said, I will connect this to an enclosure and do a DoD 3-pass on it, you know, wipe it out. It is a 1 terabyte Western Digital blue pretty pretty normal you expect to get these out of these laptops here so um that's it that's gonna wrap it up guys thanks for watching